Hey, this is Timothy from LearnCraft Spanish, formerly Accelerated Spanish, and today I'm kind of shooting an off-the-cuff video about the latest best techniques that we've found for creating an entire roadmap to Spanish fluency. And this is after almost 10 years of working with Spanish coaching students and constantly refining our curriculum. So here's, you know, our best practices for what get our students actually fluent. And basically, my goal here is not just to show you what's working for us, but how you can kind of take the principles that we're following and even create your own curriculum or whatever you want to do to get yourself from zero to fluency in a language. As you probably know, if you follow any of our stuff, one of the big premises that we follow is that the top 100 words in Spanish make up 50% of all spoken words in the language. So, of course, the theory is by mastering those words first, you get the biggest payoff right away. You get to the point where you can express a lot of things and understand a lot of things with only 100 words. And then if we go from there, the top 1,000 words in Spanish make up about 80% of the language. And they're enough to express literally anything you could possibly want to express in Spanish. I mean, you have to talk around some things, like you won't have the word for water cooler or speakers or random things like that. But you can always describe those things. If you've mastered the top 1,000 words, everything is within your power in Spanish. And at LearnCraft Spanish, we're best known for helping our students achieve fluency by mastering those top 1,000 words. And once you have mastered those words, here are some examples of the kinds of things that you can say and express things that you'll be able to understand, and that will all be second nature. So we're talking about a virtually limitless variety of things you can do in Spanish, and you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations on virtually any topic. And so my goal today is that, I mean, obviously, if you're a coaching student of ours, you don't have to create your own curriculum or lay out your own roadmap. We have it for you. But we've changed that roadmap a lot in the last couple of years, and today I'm going to show you how we created our entire curriculum and how we're recreating it from the ground up so that you know how to find the right words in Spanish, how to get full mastery of them, and then learn all of them in the right order, step by step. We'll start with the end goal in mind, which is you can say any of this stuff and not just reciting scripts, but you can just come up with this stuff on the fly without thinking about it. You're not translating in your head. You're not like just coming up with one word slowly at a time. And you also want to be able to understand any of this stuff, any of the variety of things you could hear in Spanish on the fly without thinking about it. A lot of people think that that's going to happen all at once at some point after you've been working on Spanish for a long time, you'll suddenly finally hit the tipping point, have this big aha moment, and everything that you're learning in Spanish is suddenly second nature and you can understand it. But that's just not true. We've never seen that happen to anybody. Um, the, the real story is you spend a long time, weeks, months, however long it is, really intensely studying Spanish. And instead of achieving some sort of tipping point, what happens is Spanish gradually gets easier and easier. And there will be moments when you're like, oh, wow, I just did that in Spanish without even thinking about it. But that comes through hard work and through incremental improvement. And in fact, what you're going to find if you follow the roadmap I'm about to lay out for you is that instead of doing little improvements now and then finding one big jump later, you're actually going to do the biggest jump now and then the little improvements happen later. So here's why. You know, the goal is that it's no longer an uphill battle. You're not just fighting for every single Spanish word that you say. You want to be kind of going along and just jogging along merrily like this guy. He's just jogging along. That doesn't look like an uphill battle. But currently, probably, when you're trying to speak Spanish right now, if you are in, a, in the middle of the conversation, you run into some sort of obstacle that stops you short. And that doesn't feel good. And this is especially frustrating if this is like some big core piece of the Spanish language that you can't just look up, but it actually is like some sort of complex grammatical thing that you're not aware of. 
you didn't understand the other person because they used the pronominal version of a verb or because you confused por versus para. It is you kind of got the cause and effect relationship in your your uh, phrase wrong, something like that. And these kinds of things take hours of study just to understand, let alone master. So this probably happens very often if you haven't mastered the core of Spanish yet. I mean, if it were just once a day, that would be one thing. But some of the hardest elements of Spanish, object pronouns, prepositions, subjunctives, preterites, imperfects, these things occur in almost every Spanish sentence, and you'll encounter them in every single conversation. And again, you know, these difficult grammatical elements make up like 50% of Spanish. And so that ends up getting you smacking into a wall a lot. But the point that I'm trying to get at is actually this can be something we use to our advantage. And the way that we do this is we start by taking all of those biggest obstacles, the things you're going to run into in every conversation that are the hardest to learn, and we just climb straight up them. So imagine instead of hitting an obstacle like this guy, someone were to take all of these biggest obstacles for you and stack them up really high and give you the roadmap for climbing over all of them at once. Now, of course, that would be quite a challenge to climb over it, but it might be worth doing. And to kind of show how it's worth doing, let's crunch some numbers. So remember the trickiest parts of Spanish, like object pronouns and prepositions and stuff like that, make up 50% of the words. And if you tackle those words first, here are the numbers as to how far you can get. So this is a breakdown of how the most frequent words in Spanish turn into a percentage of the language. Uh, in the first column, you have like the first 100 words, then the next 100, and so on. In the next row, you have how much of the language that accounts for. But we're concerned with column C here. So this third column is the total percentage of Spanish you have under your belt after you've mastered these most important words. Now, to be clear, you can't just randomly learn any 100 words. We're talking about the specific top 100 words. I'll show you where to find those later in the video. So look at column C and visualize how much work it would be to learn each of these uh, to get to the next level in each case. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a graph where we're turning this column sideways. So check this out. So in this graph, each of these blue bars represents 100 words in Spanish. And those first 100 words take you up to 50% of the whole Spanish language. And that's a really steep climb because, again, those are those big obstacles. So this shows how helpful those first 100 words are, but also how hard they are. It's really, really hard to learn and master those first 100 words. It's almost like climbing straight up a cliff, trying to learn those first 100 and make them second nature. But then the leap from there to the next 100 words is actually pretty easy. Because once you have the core of the language, it's not quite as hard to climb. And then once you've done a lot of that work, you find wow, you're kind of jogging along. Sure, you're learning new things all the time, but it's not as hard anymore. So your climb goes from really steep to less steep to not steep at all. And this is the roadmap that I am a big, big proponent of. All right, now let's get real. If you buy into this whole thing and you try to follow this protocol so that you can be that guy just jogging along with all of the core of Spanish under his belt, there are two huge problems, and you're going to encounter them pretty much right away. So I'll show you the problems by, I'm going to start by going to the place where we get our data on what words to learn. So if you Google Spanish frequency vocabulary and go to the Wiktionary page, this is where we're getting our data. So you can see words in priority order. We have que and de at the top. In this column, you can see the parts per million. So you just knock off uh, a few 
you know, you move the decimal point and you get this is 3% and then this is also more than 3%. So then you scroll way down and the numbers go way down because these numbers, these words are less and less frequent in the language. Okay, but there are two huge problems. Look at these words. Most of these most common words have a bunch of different meanings and definitions. You can't just look up what does k mean. It's used in so many different ways. Uh, same thing with a, with lo, with la. There's so many different ways these words are used. It's not just a matter of having one simple definition. And then the second big problem that you're going to run into pretty much right away is that there's an enormous difference between simply learning a definition of a word and actually being able to use it as if it's second nature. So again, if our goal is to get past these first 100 words, that's not just a matter of learning the definitions. You have to master them so well that you basically don't have to think about these words at all anymore. You're not really past them until they're so second nature for you that you can just rattle them off correctly in the middle of a conversation and intuitively understand them when you hear them. So I'm about to show you how we've addressed both of these issues. I think that getting to the second nature one, that second issue I described, is huge. But let's start with the first one and talk about how many different definitions and uses a lot of these words in the top 100 have. So again, learning a word isn't as simple as just learning a word. So here near the top of the list, we have the preposition a, which in Spanish can mean a whole bunch of things. It can mean to. People think of that as the most common definition. It can also mean at in relation to time. So for example, a las dos means at two o'clock. It can be used along with ir to put other verbs in the future. For example, voy a hacer eso. It can be used along with volver to indicate a repeated action. So, for example, vuelvo a hacer esto, to say I do this again. It can be used before direct objects if the direct object is a named person. So, for example, conocí a tu amiga. And it can be used with indirect objects in redundant cases. So, for example, le hice un favor a tu amigo. So yeah, when you get to number four on the list, how do you know whether you have to memorize all these definitions? You also can't really practice ah in all of these different uses until you have some verbs and some direct objects and indirect objects to name and all of that kind of stuff. So this is kind of a dilemma in just taking this this idea and you know principle that I've been describing of going down the frequency list. So Here's the fun part. This is what we've been building. We've been taking all of these words and listing out all the different ways that they're used, basically all the different skills you could need for using these words. And we're putting together a roadmap of in what order you should learn them. So here is the database that we've been building. We have thousands of words in here. And when I say thousands of words, I'm actually talking about the different meanings of the words. So here's the preposition a. Ah. We have two indicating movement. We have two or at indicating time. We have all these different meanings. And so what we can do is we can kind of list it out in what order we believe it should really be taught. And that's informed by what other words you've been learning on the list too. So we're roughly using frequency order but also making it kind of logical. So early on, you'll learn a ah, simply to refer to direction or movement. And then after that, you'll learn it, you know, along with volver. When we learned the verb volver, we learned it along with ir and so on. We're laying it out and breaking it down. And here's a picture of the roadmap that we've laid out. So these are the different lessons in our course, which is going to have 250 lessons total, the second lesson only teaches ESO, which is a little further down the frequency list, but that's a good place to start. 
Then we start teaching some connecting words like que as a conjunction and a relative pronoun, e. We move down and we teach only some uses of a and de, and then we teach more uses of de, and so on. And so what's useful about having a database like this is that we can actually work on these skills in lots and lots of combinations until they're second nature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, if we go down to lesson 40, we have some nouns, a bunch of pronouns, a few verbs. Here are a bunch of sentence examples that only use the vocabulary and the specific uses of vocabulary that go through episode 40. There are hundreds and hundreds of them, and all of these sentences were tagged by hand by our coaches to make sure that they don't involve any skills beyond what you would know by just doing the first 40 daily lessons in our program. So, yeah, that's just episode 40. When you move up to, let's say, episode 80, you have about twice as many. All of these examples, uh, that might be a bit overwhelming. So let's go back to, let's say you've only done 20 lessons as we've broken them out. There's still all of these examples that are all entirely in Spanish and use only this high-frequency vocabulary in all of these different ways. Now, of course, this addresses the first issue that I was describing where, you know, you want to break out not just the vocabulary in the top 100 words, but all the skills that are required to use that vocabulary and learn them in a logical order. The second problem is really getting to the point that you're thinking in Spanish subconsciously with each of these. So when I was first learning Spanish way back in 2012, I thought, you know, I learned about kind of this frequency stuff that a lot of people were talking about. And what I did was I made hundreds of flashcards with definitions of words on them. So I would learn like, haber means to have. Tener also means to have for some reason. A means to. De means from or of. And of course, you know, I, I couldn't speak Spanish at all. I was just learning a bunch of definitions that were in isolation. What I really wished I could do is see all of the words I was learning in context without being distracted by other words. So actually the first hire, the first time I ever hired a native speaking linguistic expert to do anything for me, I gave her about 300 words in the frequency list that I was trying to learn. And I was like, can you write a story that just uses these words and none of the others? Um, and that uses all of these words. And she did it and she did a great job. And I learned a lot from that dialogue. We made it, you know, an integral part of one of our first editions of the course. Unfortunately, you know, it used all of the vocabulary, but some of it, it only used in one way. What we really want, what you ideally want, is to be able to practice each new skill you're learning, let's say using a in the you know construction ir a, you want to practice that thing in a variety of ways until it's second nature. When you've only learned words in isolation, speaking out loud in Spanish means just registering one word at a time instead of it flowing. If you really want it to flow, it's all got to be, you know, fully, fully mastered. So now that we have this roadmap of small, specific skills, what you can do is you can just choose one skill to practice. I really wish I had this when I was first learning Spanish. Let's say a ah, in ir a. Ah. And let's choose, um, let's say we're at just lesson 60. And so this is going to filter all of the examples by just all the skills you've mastered by lesson 60. And then we'll use a ah, as in ir a. Ah. Now we have all of these dozens and dozens of examples that use vamos a hacer, voy a ir, va a ser, and so on. And all of these are fully within my capabilities, assuming I've gotten through lesson 60. 
But of course, there's, there's an aspect of it that I need to work on mastering, so I can practice all of these examples as much as I need to. Remember, any given skill that is not fully second nature yet is going to trip you up in a conversation. It's going to be that obstacle that you hit. So by starting with the most frequent skills, like ir a, and then having a variety of practice to work on it, but all fully within your capabilities, you can make all of this stuff second nature so quickly and then work logically from 1 to 100 and eventually to 1,000. Another great thing about what we've built here, and this is just for our coaching students, but basically we have, you know, they can find their flashcards within that whole tool, all filtered based on the skills that they've learned. You can also go to this comprehension quiz, choose the lesson you're on. I'm going to choose lesson 60, and then start listening to sentence examples that are just within your current skills. So you're truly mastering all of these skills before moving on, and that includes reading, writing, listening, and speaking. We also have a large variety of other ways that our students practice with us, of course, with their coach, um, with this software. There's audio quizzing in this software so that you know you can just practice in all kinds of different ways and specifically where you are on the roadmap. That's the value of having a full map with every little detail of the language, all the way from one to a thousand. Now let's talk about timelines. So most students who are very, very serious about learning Spanish have about one or two hours a day. If you can keep up the pace of one to two hours a day for about two months, here's what you can get to. Now, these sentences might look weird because they don't have a lot of really specific meaning in them. What they have is complex grammar. And where you are on this is well beyond the first 100 words. And uh, just kind of, you know, you're getting to the point that you're really saying a lot of things in Spanish and understanding a lot of things. You can master all of this in two months with about one to two hours a day. Let's say you have an entire year, though. That's about how long it takes to master the top 1,000 words. And let's say we're talking about, uh, you know, 2024. By the end of February, you'll be here. By the end of April, you'll be about here with all of these skills, second nature. By June, by the end of June, you'll be about here, which is kind of crazy. You can see there's a lot of meaning in these sentences. So, You've not only mastered all this core vocabulary in terms of grammar and sentence structure, you're now saying real vivid things, and it only gets better from there. By the end of August, you'll be about here. And then the rest of the curriculum isn't in the database yet, but it will be by this January. And here's a sample of the sentences you'll be saying by that point. And of course, this is just a tiny sampling of the millions of things that you can do when you combine all of the vocabulary and skills you'll learn with just the top 1,000 words in the language. So yeah, if you want to be fluent in 2024, there are a few ways you can do this. You can plot your own roadmap doing all the work that we've been doing of breaking down all the skills of Spanish and laying it out. But we release the LearnCraft Spanish podcast for free. You can do our whole curriculum, episodes 1 to 250, and uh, just follow along there. It does all of this. And off of the curriculum that we present in the LearnCraft Spanish podcast, we're going to be doing so much more with these tools, with this roadmap, and with everything that I presented you today. 2024 is going to be our biggest year by very far. We have so many exciting things coming, so please stay tuned. This is all stuff that no other language learning company is doing. We're not focused on entertainment. We're focused on real mastery of the language. So yeah, watch the podcast, watch your email if you're subscribed to our newsletter, and we'll be releasing some really, really exciting stuff throughout the end of the year and all through 2024.